Hey everybody, What Lurks Beneath here. Just wanted to give you guys a friendly reminder to go ahead and follow my new channel, What Lurks Between, where I will have a significant amount of cryptid uploads, kind of like What Lurks Beneath, except more of just compilations of just one cryptid versus a mixture and variety like I have with What Lurks Above. I understand I do release a lot of content and it can be very hard to keep up with, so instead of trying to constantly follow my barrage of videos that I do with What Lurks Beneath, you can follow those two channels as well as this one where I give you weekly recaps and lots of good compilations for you guys to watch. Don't forget to click on the link below in my description that will take you to my Twitch channel in which I will be doing some live reading, answering questions, reading stories live, all that fun stuff here this week or next week, so be sure to click that link and follow me on there. Let's get on to today's video. So, I don't know if anyone's ever going to read this, but I feel like I need to get my story out there. When I tell people this story, they just brush it off and say, oh wow, that's creepy. But this event really took a toll on me. Anyway, this is a completely true story. I'll start it off with a little introduction. Hi, my name's Chloe. I'm 17, and two summers ago, when I was 15, 16, I worked at an average sleepaway summer camp. I never went to the camp when I was a kid, but I did some first aid lifeguard training at it a year prior to being a counselor there. I loved it. That's why I decided to work there, get all of my volunteer hours and spend my whole summer there. Well, four weeks to be exact. It was right on the water, and I thought it was going to be nice. Well, I was wrong. Very wrong. Everything was okay and absolutely normal until my last week. So, the last week I worked was a senior girls week, meaning girls aged 11 to 14 could attend, and all of the counselors were female. I had a cabin of five girls, two of which were total brats, so most of my time was delegated to them. All these girls were 11 or 12. Now, the first two days of camp were fairly normal. I had a few homesick campers at bedtime, but with some positive reassurance, I got them to sleep. Homesickness with kids is only ever usually a problem at night, specifically the first few nights, as the kids adjust from being away from home. That's why I was so surprised. One of the most independent girls in my cabin, who's also one of my favorites, woke me up by standing in front of me and waiting for me to wake up. Creepy, right? On the third night, actually. She tells me that she thinks there's somebody outside and that she wants to go home. This camp was on an island surrounded by thick forest. I told her it was probably just an animal. There were notorious deer and raccoons at the camp very often, and with some reassurance, I got her to go back to bed. Now, I didn't think twice about this, having worked three weeks already. It was pretty common, honestly. Now, this is where things start getting weird. The next night, so night four, she does the same thing to wake me up. She tells me that she has to go to the bathroom, which was a bit of a walk away from our cabin. I got with her, obviously, and once we're in the bathroom in the light, it was pretty clear to me that she had wet herself. So I asked her about it and she said it was just an accident. All right, I had no problems with this. I let her get herself cleaned up and went to get one of the camp leaders, wondering what I should do about the girl's sleeping bag. So the camp leader, her name was Elmo, Everyone at the camp had code names. Something fun for the kids, I guess. The girl in question's name is Karen. I don't know why I haven't mentioned that yet. So, Elmo starts asking this girl some questions, since we're all still in the bathroom. I assume it was because this girl was 11, which is kind of old to be peeing the bed, especially when she was so independent thus far in the week, and never had a problem going to the bathroom herself before. So, Elmo asked Karen and answered that it was because she was scared. She was too scared to move or get out of her sleeping bag. Elmo asked what she was afraid of, and she said, the man. Now, I was standing over on the side, listening and chiming in here or there. I'm a believer in ghosts, openly, but at this moment, I could admit that I did not think of anything like this. The things kids come up with, especially having worked with kids for three weeks, I wasn't really phased. Elmo had asked her which man she was referring to, 
and she couldn't seem to name him. But she described him, and this description is terrifying. Elmo asked if he was tall, and she said no. He was average height. Elmo kept trying to joke around with this girl, I guess to try and make her fears less scary. But this girl was not having that shit. It's like she was trying to warn us for real. Just how she spoke. Anyway, she tells us over a long period of Q&A that this demon is average height and not nice. He's a man, but not human. She said that he had been following her and her brother for a long time. She told us that one day she was playing in the forest at her grandparents' house, and that's when she met him. He scared her, and she ran away from him. She said he always followed her, and he always was with her when she slept at different places. Honest to God, I should have seen all the red flags all over it, but I didn't. I was tired and it sounded like a kid's nightmare after watching a horror movie or something. After all, my leader Elmo got this girl to calm down and she was crying as she told us this and got her back to be with new sheets and blankets and stuff. And she told Karen that our repair guy, Shank, was going to do some ghost busting for her in the morning and that everything would be okay. Blah, blah. The next morning at the counselor's meeting, before all the kids are up, I told my counselor friends about this. I didn't tell all the counselors, just my close personal friends. I didn't want this, what I believed to be funny ghost story, to get out to the kids, because that wouldn't be good. Kids take things seriously, and I didn't think anything of it. We all laughed about it and shrugged it off, vowed not to tell anyone else what this girl had said. Well, just as I wrapped up that story to them, this other counselor girl named Ace walks into the break room. We didn't like Ace. She was honestly just a crab. But we make small talk anyway. Then she tells us something that had my whole group shook. Ace tells us that later last night, two girls from her cabin, age 13, went out to the bathroom together. As they were coming back from the bathroom, the two campers started to freak out and run. They felt like something was following them. They were both crying apparently when they got back to Ace's cabin, and Ace had to calm them down, but got them back to sleep eventually. Now, that was weird. My friend group and I decided not to tell Ace about my situation, because she had a big mouth, and was probably going to start something around the camp, which we were all trying to avoid. Well, the rest of the day went by fine, completely normal actually. Near the end of the day, after the campfire, Shank, who is the repair guy, whom also happens to be an actual ordained minister, invited me and Elmo and Karen into the kitchen, and he blesses this big bag of salt for us. Now, he was doing this mostly as a comfort for Karen, and like a joke thing that you would do for a kid just to give them reassurance. But Shank told me to be careful anyway. He didn't like the way the situation was feeling. I just laughed and brushed him off. We spread the salt, doorway, and windows, making lined of salt so demons couldn't enter. Well, I thought this would solve our little foolish problem, right? Wrong. Kieran pulls me aside before bedtime and looks up at me with the saddest face I've ever seen on a child ever. And all she says is, Ink, which is my code name. This isn't going to work. I appreciate it a lot, but the demon, he likes salt. He's going to come for it. If that wasn't a perfect quote, it was something along those lines. Main point is though, our new demon friend likes salt. It was at this moment that everything hit me. I don't know why, but I started having a panic attack. I didn't let the kids see this though. I told Karen just to try and get some rest, and I slipped out and ran to the kitchen in tears. I begged Shank to let me sleep in the break room and have one of the senior staff members take my cabin over for the night. He hugged me as I cried. I was so freaked out all of a sudden, and I don't know why it had hit me all at once. I was so overrun by sheer terror, which I have never felt before or since. I felt as though something very bad was going to happen. Shank gave me another bag of blessed salt to keep with me. This is all true. I can't make this up and told me I had to sleep in that cabin. I had to protect those kids, and that it was God's plan for me, he said. Reflection on this, I think he was horrified and just messing with me. But I was horrified. I listened though. 
I clutched my flashlight and the bag of salt as I tried to sleep that night. But I still had this ominous, horrific feeling of fear and death looming over me. It was so creepy. I should note that this cabin was just a small room with four sets of bunk beds, two on either side of the room, and two windows, one at the back if you're facing inwards the door, and one directly next to me. Directly outside the back window, there was this big tree, so there wasn't much of a view, but you could clearly see out of mine. It must have been around 2 or 3 a.m., and there were no phones allowed or any clocks in the cabin, so I had nothing to tell time or to stare at except the surrounding darkness. This is when things really hit the fan. All the girls in my cabin, completely asleep, all inhale a deep breath at the same time and exhale the word, ink, which is my code name. So I whisper back, are you girls awake? And I get nothing. After a few minutes of being absolutely petrified, I hear their normal snoring again and shuffling sleeping sounds begin. That wasn't the end of the creepiness of this night for me. Oh no. Next, a while later, I hear the door creak open. There was an outside screen and an inside actual door. I had both doors closed. I hear the outer on creaking. I become alert immediately, adrenaline coursing through me. I'm looking out my window and at the door, trying to see anything in the pitch blackness. When I see a black flash to my right, I look over and I see this entirely black being leaning over one of my girls in the bottom bunk across from me. And as soon as I notice it, I see it reaching for this girl's face. I flick my flashlight on and grip the bag of salt and I said, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. Over and over again. I see this black mass dart towards the door and the door just opens, the inner door. It opens up wide and I believe the demon had left. I still felt absolutely freaked out, but I didn't feel the same weight of terror as before. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and as soon as I saw the sun start to come up from my window, I darted up and over to my good friend Marco's cabin. Before I can tell her anything of what I just saw, she tells me that she was woken up in the middle of the night by someone or something breathing heavily outside of her window next to her bed. But when she got up to check it out, thinking it was a kid or something. All she saw was a dark figure turning and going into the bushes, and she didn't see anything else. She brushed it off as a deer, probably. We went for an early morning shower, and I told her everything. That's not the end, though. Even though that was my last night, and this was not the day we were supposed to leave. Marco and I were in the break room, waiting for the other to wake up and join us for a morning meeting. Ace comes in and tells us something that made my blood run cold. Despite the fact that I had calmed down from the night's terror, I felt oddly peaceful. She said that she had looked out her window before bed, around midnight, when the moon and stars were lighting shit up, and she said that she saw a black figure that looked like a person leaning against a tree behind my cabin, looking in the window. Might I mention where she was describing to have seen the figure looking would have been directly facing Karen's bed in our cabin. At this point, I decided to tell Ace about everything. I told everyone. There was too much substantial proof for them to not believe what I was telling them, which was the truth. Ace never knew about what Karen told me in Elmo and my experience with the demon, and yet she had two experiences of her own with her girls being followed and seeing something looking into my cabin, what seemed to match the descriptions. And Elma was there when Karen was telling us the story of the same demon. When I got home from my week, I vouched to never go back to that camp. Yet, I felt oddly safe. I didn't feel like the demon had followed me at all. I felt so oddly calm and peaceful in the following days. I told one of my friends who often has spiritual encounters and asked what he thought. And he told me something that creeped me out. He told me that when I was at camp, the same night I had the encounter with the demon, a spirit told him or showed him or something that I was in grave danger, and he said that he was praying for me that night repeatedly because he felt a connection to me and that something really bad was going on. He was so shocked to hear my story when I told him. He was positive that I had encountered some kind of demon that had latched itself onto this girl. I'm still freaked out to my experience, 
This was a true story, and no part of it was made up or exaggerated. If you actually heard all this, let me know what you think. I don't know a lot about the paranormal, honestly, and it scares me, especially now. But please tell me what you think, and if this is something that you think was my imagination or not. I hoped it was, but when I got up in the morning, the door I know that had closed the night before was still open after I saw the figure open it and dart out. I'm not exactly sure when this was, but I believe I was five or six. I was laying in my bed at night, all tucked in and everything. One of my arms was on one side. The other hand was against the other wall. I felt a hand slide into mine, like as if it were holding my hand. I didn't think it was very scary, honestly. It was a little comforting at first, and I thought it was my mom who came to my room and was holding my hand. I opened my eyes, and then no one was in the room other than me, and I realized the hand was against the wall. I started shrieking after that and yelling for my parents. Eventually, they came, and the feeling of the hand went away. My mom believed it was a demon, and I didn't know what it was, but after that, I always wore socks to bed so it wouldn't touch my feet. I've had three other experiences, and my sister has had a lot more, but I always wondered if that was one actually a demon, or what do you guys think? I'd like to know if anyone else has had similar encounters like I did. I just read a similar post, so I feel like this is a pretty common encounter. My boyfriend at the time and I went to Key West in 2014 for vacation back in my junior year of college. Doing some bar hopping, we went into the Main Strip's Coyote Ugly Bar. I ended up sitting next to this very thin, dark-haired woman. I asked her if it's alright if I sat there. She turns her head to be an incredibly slow, slow manner. She nods her head up and down, equally slow. I don't think anything of it. My boyfriend and I order a drink and we're talking amongst ourselves for a minute. I'm facing away from the woman and I feel her tap on my shoulder. So I turn around and she's raising her glass to me to cheers. I should explain what she looks like because it's a lot like what I imagine a demon wearing human skin would look like. Bone thin, shallow skin, stringing black straight hair with sharp cheekbones and nose. Her eyes were black. I mean huge black pupils that didn't blink. They looked like static. She cheers me and opens her mouth to smile, and her gums are gray. Her teeth are gray and small, and I remember immediately having this overwhelming feeling that she wanted to eat my skin. I'm in pretty much panic mode at this point and whip my head back to my boyfriend. He's seen this woman now too and he grabs me by the arm to get us to move to the back of the room as quickly as possible. I'm basically cowering. I know, super brave. Always loved reading about demons and possibly faced with one, I'm jello. Facing the back wall, I turn to start making our way out to the street and the woman has got her head completely cranked around to stare at me from the bar. I feel her staring at me as we leave, and I haul ass back to the hotel. She didn't say a single word throughout the entire encounter, and I always regretted not asking her to speak. I will say, my boyfriend and I talked about it after and considered the gray teeth and mouth and general craziness possibly due to drugs. But I've seen my fair share of drug addicts, even one try to kidnap me, and this was not the same. I think about this episode pretty often. Even years later, that feeling of encountering something soulless that wanted to harm me has never diminished. My aunt recently shared a story with me after I talked to her about my recent interest in paranormal investigations. Preface. She lived in a home where the entrance led to the kitchen. Then you go straight through the kitchen, through the living room, turn right down the hallway into her bedroom where she sleeps at night on a waterbed. All relevant shortly. Her story goes like this. I heard what sounded like somebody opening the door to the house, which I found strange since everyone was home and in bed at the time. The sound was accompanied by a foul smell in the air, pungent and familiar, like dead flesh. She knows this because she's an RN, or for those that don't know, a registered nurse. She said as whoever came in walked closer to her room, 
the smell got worse, until finally they opened the door and crawled onto her bed. She states the smell intensified when it spoke to her. She could feel its breath on her face and she refused to open her eyes. The thing's breath smelt of rotting flesh and it stated to her, if you keep going down this path, you will be mine. Then just like that, it was gone. She was struggling with alcoholism and a shopping addiction at the time. She said she wasn't drunk at this time. Now, I don't know why, but I don't think a demon would warn you to quit your habits. Any ideas on what this could have possibly been? Before I share this story, I want to share the fact that this is my first post ever. It's a story that I've only shared with two other people in my life, whom I'm very close to because I sound crazy trying to explain what happened to me. I am from Roswell, New Mexico, born and raised. I grew up dealing with stuff and alien nonsense my entire life. The whole town is a tourist attraction for people who believe in aliens and believe there actually was a UFO crash that was here in the early 50s. Gift shops, cheap souvenirs, strange people galore. I'm a very logical thinker and have had many strange things happen to me in the past, but have always dealt with them in a this can logically be explained mindset since I can remember. But what I'm about to write is about something I cannot explain, and it also is something I'm hesitant to even think about anymore. I was camping with my cousin Cam, 17 at the time, same age as I was, his little brother Nick, who was 12, and my aunt and uncle. We were near Cloudcroft, New Mexico, up in the mountains. My uncle had just bought a new camper, and we decided to go camping with it for the weekend. The weather was beautiful, and me and my cousins decided to bring a tent to sleep in instead of the camper so we could be poop heads in peace. We set up our tent about 60 yards away from the camper and the fire that was right outside of it. Towards the end of the first night and after a long day of exploring, we all decided to lay down for the night. We were not camping on an actual campsite. It was a spot that my uncle had found some years back and it was the perfect spot to set up camp. At about 3 a.m., the fire was completely out. My cousins and I were still awake. Nick, being the youngest, was trying to stay up to be cool with us, but ended up falling asleep. It was only Cam and I awake now. We were just talking, talking about hot chicks from school, brilliant ideas for things that need to be invented, like male birth control, and eventually, slowly started to fall asleep too. All of a sudden, we heard a blood-curdling scream from the distance, probably the same distance away the camper was, only in the opposite direction. Me and Cam both picked our heads up off the pillow and said almost simultaneously, what was that? It wasn't a bear. It wasn't a fox. It was big. The closest way I know how to describe it is a mixture of a banshee and a rabid peacock. Its voice was deep and echoed through the deep woods. It let out another blood-curdling shriek and we both sat upright on our own blow-up mattress. Immediately after the screech, it started clicking. An odd, deep clicking sound coming from the back of its throat. It was loud enough to hear from the distance, too. We were scared, and neither of us had no idea what it could be. So we waited a second, both quiet as a mouse. It let out another scream, followed by a series of clicks, but it seemed to be closer now maybe 10 yards closer. I looked at Cam, and he looked just as shocked as I was feeling. I was trying to convince myself it was a bird of some sort, or a mountain cat. Then, I heard it walking. It was walking on two feet, and I could distinctly hear it. It even sounded big, taking huge strides, cracking branches and leaves under its feet as it walked. It sounded like it was coming close to us. It screeched and clicked loudly again. I could tell it was about halfway to us now. Suddenly, another scream and clicks came from another direction, sounding just as close as the other creature. It sounded more aggressive, more angry and dominant. The first creature then let off a series of clicks too. Then it hit me. They were communicating. At this point, I was terrified and so was Cam. 
I had an axe under my blow-up mattress, but I was afraid to get up and grab it. Then both of the creatures started walking towards us, both on two legs, not screaming or clicking, but it sounded like they were trying to be sneaky, sneak up on our tent. They were getting closer and closer. The first one screamed loudly, and I could tell it was roughly 15 yards away now, and so was the other one. After screaming, it started clicking again, and the other one clicked back at it. They were both walking closer and closer to the tent. I could hear them both stepping on limbs and leaves, but I could feel the ground thud with each step they took. I was panicking, frantically looking for my axe while Cam was frantically trying to wake up his little brother. I couldn't find my axe anywhere. I realized I had left it near the campfire because we were using it to cut pieces of wood for the fire. Nick was not waking up, and they were getting closer and closer to the tent. Eventually, me and Cam froze. The second one had stopped about 10 feet away from the tent, but the first one was walking right up to the tent. As soon as it was right outside the tent, I yelled as loud as I could out of pure fear. Get away from here! Leave us alone! It stopped. It was right outside. I could almost see it through the tent. It was huge, tall enough to lean over and look through the top of the tent if it wanted to. I could tell it was slim, and the creature was heavy because of how tall it was. I could feel its energy, and it was very negative. I felt the vibes of the universe, and they were telling me that whatever these things were, they were not just there to say hi or steal our hot dogs. I was frozen. They were right outside, and the moon was covered by clouds, so moonlight was no longer shining anywhere. I couldn't even hear it breathing. It was silent. The second one clicked from behind us, still ten feet away or so from the tent. The first one didn't move. It didn't make a single sound, and it was probably a foot away from the tent. My heart was beating so hard that I thought I was going to pass out. All of a sudden, it took two huge steps back, and the second one let out a scream so loud it hurt my ears. I immediately burst into tears. The second creature took off into the woods, pounding the ground underneath it, running on two legs faster than ever. The first one apparently turned around and walked away back into the deep woods. I waited until I completely heard its footsteps disappear until I unzipped the tent, threw little Nick over my shoulder, and we booked it towards the camper. We got inside and woke up my aunt and uncle. They had no idea what was going on and urged us to take our butts to bed. We slept in the camper the next two nights and I didn't leave the campsite for the rest of the trip. I don't know what we encountered that night, but all I know is that it was not of this kind. It was not human, not bear, not a four-legged animal, and it definitely was not a rabid peacock. It has scared me ever since and its energy and screams still haunt me to this day. While some may think it was a Bigfoot or a skinwalker, I think it was something more evil, like a demon.